Hello everyone, thank you for this invitation. Can you all hear me all right? Yes, okay. So it is a great honor for me finding myself among all those mayors who have done so many wonderful things. I represent the private sector and you do realize it's a privilege for me being able to witness what happens. I apologize for my Greek, but I have spent more than 27 years abroad, so I'm trying to reset my mind and my linguistic skills. Sometimes people ask me abroad what a smart city is all about, and I offer them examples from Greece. I was born in Athens, so I'm half Athenian and half resident of Kalamata, and this is my affiliation uh, with this region. Here we find ourselves in the ancient uh, kingdom of Sparta, and usually when I talk about that abroad, try to explain what a smart city is all about, people say that it's all about technology. No, it's not about technology. It goes beyond that, and everything starts out with society. And the example I like to bring forward is the paradigm of the Peloponnesian War. Sparta and Athens were very upgraded back then, technology-wise. Back then, Sparta was even more developed compared to Athens. They focused mainly on weapons and defense, and this is why they won the Peloponnesian War. But in history, Athens prevailed. Have you ever considered why? Well, it is a good example because Athens, thanks to its innovation, culture, people and collaboration, prevailed and grew more. It is very important realizing what it actually means being part of a smart city. And this allows me to say something about high how we want to, to share our experiences about smart cities. We have seen so many examples abroad from cities. We have seen what they have achieved and what they have lost. So I will summarize that on four points. I will not talk about solutions because on a technical level, it would be easy to find solutions. First of all, we need different way of thinking. It needs a paradigm shift, a change of mentality. And an example is what, which is the definition of sustainability. Imagine that we are back in 18,000 and we try to think for sustainable development back then. How can we plan for the future? An engineer back then would say to you that you need a more effective horse that drinks less water and eats less food, because nobody could assume that new technologies are coming and that will change the way of our life. This is the same situation that we're experiencing right now. We cannot understand how the conditions will change with artificial intelligence, with a lot of um, with a lot of other dimensions. We don't know what might come in the future and how this will change uh, the future. So first of all, we should introduce, we should adopt another way of thinking. We have learned to think about the future with the past terms. So we have also a legislative framework of the past so we should also change the legislative framework in order to be able to adapt in those new conditions. The second is cooperation and the critical mass. One cannot make a smart city if you don't have the collaboration among different groups that can work together and come up with new ideas. So this is the critical mass when it comes to ideas, resources and people. Right now you have all those mayors here and discuss and people from the private sector and from other countries, this is what the critical mass is all about. The third point is the understanding of the conditions that we're living in and the world that we're living. 
Three years, the so-called VUCA, uh, VUCA word. VUCA means volatility. The first word is a volatile word. We cannot foresee the future. The technology, the climate crisis, the change might be something good, but volatility is something bad. We discuss climate, we discuss technology, economy. So all those elements should be taken into consideration when we plan for solutions. The second thing is the uncertainty. Predict the future. Since we are not aware of the conditions of the future, but based on those issues, we should accept that we live in an uncertain world. So, we have to uh, adopt a different way of thinking and try to find solutions in a different way. Third is the understanding of the situation that we are living to. Cooperation, I have mentioned volatility, uncertainty and cooperation. So the fourth element is this holistic approach. You we have been discussing various projects. So we usually think in a linear way. We think about water, we think about uh, buildings. However, this is an interconnected system, and this is how we should uh, adopt a holistic approach. This is how we should approach smart cities. And let us not forget technology and sustainability. We should think that there is no smart cities without uh, taking into consideration sustainability. London, for example, faced this problem. London had three different wigs, three different groups that they have set up, three different uh, plans. There was another group for digital, they have been setting up their own plans, and there was another group that's setting up a plan for resilience. All those groups had never discussed all those plans in combination. Nobody brought those groups all together, and they have not uh, have not thought about synergies. So I would like to share with you those three points. And this is what I wanted to say when it comes to smart cities.